My name is Richard Devine. I'm an electronic producer and sound designer based from Atlanta, Georgia. I do sound design for video games, TV commercials, film trailer work, audio products, software plugins, hardware synthesizers, actual electric cars. So today I'm going to show you guys Flow Motion, which is a hybrid FM digital synthesizer. There's about a thousand presets that come with it, and I was responsible for creating a hundred of those patches that we see here. And that spans through many different categories, bass sounds, lead sounds, pads, FM textures, pretty wide variety of different stuff that I put in here. I've been using FM synthesis going back um, to the early Yamaha vintage DX7, DX100 synthesizers, uh, many of which I still own and have. You know, when I'm making percussion sounds like kick drums or snares or hi-hats, um, with FM synthesis, it just has a sort of punchiness that it's hard to get with like additive subtractive synthesis. The Flow Motion synthesizer is actually an excellent synth for people that are beginners that are just wanting to find out about FM synthesis. So the Flow Motion synthesizer is basically set up into two different areas. This is the front page. These are the four oscillators that we see here. With this sound, uh, I'm using one of my favorite features of uh, Flow Motion is the uh, snapshot sequencer that we see here. So as I hold down a key, it's sequencing through all eight steps. Now, if you see me clicking through, um, if I highlight, you can, you can change the step length if you want. You can make it play just three steps. Um, have it go all the way out to eight. Um, so each one of these basically is a different snapshot. Um, if you want to look at it as sort of a crude way of storing snapshot or a preset per step, it's kind of parameter locking all of the parameters per step, and you can sequence and play through that, which is uh, really kind of cool. So for this one, if I select number two, you see that my settings have changed uh, that are stored for slot number two. Number three, you see that now my wave, uh, wave shapes have changed. Um, number two, you can, and you can set these in any order that you want. I can go up or down, um, select whatever preset I want to play in that slot. You can also adjust the timing of how this is played. Right now I have it set to key trigger mode, but you can set it to BPM, so it automatically auto-locks to your master tempo, which is 120 right now for my session. You can also set it to host. So if I set my sequencer here, play button, my transport is going to control the tempo of how fast or slow the snapshot sequencer plays at. This is much easier to understand the relationship between um, the different oscillators modulating to each other um, rather than by using you know, opcodes and algorithms like you would typically see with an FM synthesizer. So everything you can see is right in front of you. And you're just basically just twisting knobs and turning knobs at different adjustments to get the sound that you're looking for. So in a way, this is, this is a very easy way to kind of just tweak and using your ears to get what you want very quickly. So for each oscillator, you can control the pitch, the octave range, the tuning frequency, and fine tune. And you also have a feedback knob. You can also switch from PM to FM. Um, you can also set the frequency independent if you want, if you don't want to play it musically to a 12 tone scale. Uh, on the bottom here, you have your panning control. And this is your main output for that oscillator. And as you can see, all four oscillators have the duplicated functions for all the pitch and uh, feedback controls. And then uh, in between those, these, these wires that you see here are the modulation uh, destinations. So it's modulation, cross-modulation between all, all four oscillators. And you can either turn on, you can either use two oscillators, three oscillators, or a single oscillator, whatever you want. The sound gets played into this mixer section that connects directly into the uh, motion page if you click it. And if you adjust these parameters here, anywhere you can, you can assign either an envelope 
or an LFO. And these are switchable, so they can be either or. And it's as simple as just dragging the modulation source to that parameter, and it shows up with that color. You can also right click, and you'll see that you have assignments that you can make for either mod A, B, C, or D. And that's represented here with the four different colors which makes it really easy to see visually what you're modulating with in uh, the signal path between uh, uh, the four oscillators. You're hearing with this sound, I'm modulating uh, actually the, uh, the frequency cutoff with this LFO. So if I set the rate up higher, you'll hear increase. At audio rates, if I bring up this, set the uh, resonance up a little more. Change the wave shape of the LFO. Get more of a pulsy type sound. So you got other shapes here that you can use. Sine, triangle, square, saw, ramp, or sample and hold. Um, what's cool about this, um, when we're looking at the motion page, is you can actually assign this also to your effects. So say we want to apply that to the reverb mix. So you can freely assign um, any of the modulation sources to anywhere you see a uh, modulation ring here, which makes this really easy to get stuff kind of animating really quickly. And so you can get some really cool sounds. Over here, you have an arpeggiator and note sequencer section here at the top. And as you can see here, you have um, control for the rate for how fast it plays. You have a swing knob control, a gate knob, which actually sort of plays the, the decay amount of the sounds. So if I close that down to zero, it's just like a tiny little tick. And as I start opening it up, the decay starts to release more of that sound. So I have a uh, re-trigger and hold buttons here. And then you have the mode to actually um, control the direction of the arpeggiator, whether the, the notes are ascending, descending, up or down, or random, which is fun. We can go to four octaves. The functionality of the instrument, everything can change right down to the core, so it can be whatever you want. Um, and it can be tailored perfectly to your needs. So it's a, it's, it's a pretty unique um, tool for, for creating music and um, performing music. <laughs>